people that was uh, an interesting session and now we move on to our next segment i would like to invite on stage our first speaker for the day mr somil majumdar co-founder ceo and managing director of sports village our speaker somil majumdar co-founder ceo and managing director of sports village since 2003 somil has led sports village india's premier sports education organization to impact over 60 lakh children and partner with over 18000 schools known for his innovative edu sports program and recognized with the cii emerging entrepreneur award somil advocates for inclusive sports education he holds degrees from iit bombay and iim bangalore a black belt in karate and has co-authored the influential book get kids to play a very warm welcome to you sir Somil Majumdar, co-founder, CEO, and managing director of Sports Village. Since 2003, Somil has led Sports Village, India's premier sports education organization, to impact over 60 lakh children and partner with over 18,000 schools. Known for his innovative edu sports program and recognized with the CII Emerging Entrepreneur Award, Somil advocates for inclusive sports education. He holds degrees from IIT Bombay and IIM Bangalore, a black belt in karate, and has co-authored the influential book Get Kids to Play. May I now request Mr. Somil Majumdar to please join us on stage and address the gathering. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. A huge round of applause for Mr. Somil Majumdar. Hi, good morning. Not at all. It's just a good reminder of where sports stands in the pecking order as well. <laughs> But uh, always difficult to follow your lead, uh, and happy to come afterwards and be in the same room. First of all, uh, good, good, good morning. Good morning. All of you know how this works. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I I got into this whole uh, notion of working with schools around 15 years ago when we started edu sports, and after a few years of doing that, I went back to my mother. She retired as a head teacher of a municipal school in Dharavi. Dharavi is the world's largest slum, if you for those who don't know. And she used to be a teacher for like 15, 25, 30 years. I went back and bowed to her. that i'm amazed at the work that she was doing as a school leader as a growing up boy you never appreciate what your moms do but you know i've been hearing since morning what what's going on and i i bow to all of you it's amazing what all of you are doing please it's amazing what all of you are doing congratulations uh, i'm happy that our kids have people like you who care enough to do what you're doing i am here to talk about something which sounds very i don't want to use the word frivolous but sounds very superficial sometimes uh but i want to present to you the thought that this can be a very powerful tool since morning we've spoken about mental health we've spoken about parent engagement we've spoken about teachers uh, well being we've spoken about school as a community leader kids fitness we've spoken about what the child's life is what's going on in their head we spoken about attention spans or reducing attention spans and i want to propose to you and maybe give you some data points and and maybe provide a toolkit to say there is a solution there is a safe space we need to find a way to create these safe fun spaces for kids life has become too serious for kids we have to find a way to recreate those safe fun spaces for kids and the playground and what can happen in your pe class is one big opportunity for us to do that and we are here to talk about what we've been doing we call solving lot of these issues around physical health mental health life skills leadership and so on champions uh, and we call it our program is called like creating champions in life so maybe and we also taken a brave step at saying we have a champions ka syllabus champions ka syllabus so i hope that intrigues some of you 
So let me try and show you what we mean by champions ka syllabus. Can you play the video please? Can you play the video? Syllabus of a champion is very tough. Every day is a new chapter. Every day, a new exam. Sometimes, there are surprise tests. Sometimes, challenging group assignments. Just 80 to 90% is not enough. You always have to give 100%. Here, the pitch is your classroom. The scoreboard is your report card. And the timer, your toughest exam paper. Here, every mistake is a lesson learned. Every setback is a stepping stone. There are no paper leaks. No cheating here. The only thing that matters is your hard work. Here, students dream during the day and stay awake at night thinking, how do I get better? The syllabus of a champion is tough. Because the ones who pass it are the ones who are passionate about it. Presenting Sports Village, India's largest school sports organization that is giving every child a chance to play and dream of winning medals for India at the 2036 Olympics. Sports Village, creating champions in life. So, uh, creating champions in life, that's the uh, syllabus that we are claiming to make. So how do we do it? How do we create champions in life? Uh, this is more, the stuff outside you can start, but more importantly, how do you include all kids? How do you make it fun? How do you get fun back into our kids' lives? And in the school context, in the timetable, the limited time space and so on, the whole program does that. What we found, and this is the important piece, what we mean by champions in life, we found improvements around academic performance, we found improvement in attendance, we found improvement in social emotional learning, we found improvements in uh, health and fitness, we found improvement in gender empowerment, livelihood creations, we work with private schools and government schools. We also found improvement on sports excellence. So broadly we define it as your fundamental physical health, your 21st century skills, life skills as you call it, and sporting excellence. On all of these, uh, we've seen improvement, and just to, uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning, this is our 21st year. We've been doing this for 21 years. This is our 21st birthday that we're celebrating. Thank you. I, I, when we started, I never thought I'll be in a room full of educators like this ever in my life, but I'm glad to be here and privileged to be here. So we've seen this works, and the reason I'm here is to just start, go to the beginning. The, the, the toughness of the role you're playing the immensity of the responsibility you have, there are tools available. And this is not my tool. This is a tool called play. All of you can use it. Sport, play, PE, sports, a different level of structure. It's available. Making it happen in a school context while achieving all the goals that schools have in terms of parent engagement, regulatory compliance, delivering on timelines, schedules, commitment, and so on, is what people like us are trying to help you do. But it's possible to do, it's working. We have now data for that. So we, this is broadly the way it's structured. We have pre-primary. Some of you know about us, we've been around. We've, I'm sure we've knocked on some of your doors in the past as well. And we have the pre-primary program for fundamental skills, primary for multi-sports, and then sports, sports excellence. What has changed essentially is the whole alignment to NCF, uh, NEP, and NABET now. People have used our program for NABET certifications. We had additional lesson plans. We had more age-appropriate uh, lesson plans now. Flexibility to focus on life skills. The whole champions in life has now got added to it. As again, just physical fitness. It's now a broader creating champions in life program because that's what is happening with our kids. And sports has that power. Of all the classes, I challenge you, sports class is what kids want. If that's what they want, can we find a way to achieve our goals by doing what they like? and still achieving our goals. It's possible. All the stuff that you spoke about, about mental resilience, leadership, dealing with failure, handling stress, the sports field, the playground as an extension of your classroom. I'll say it again, the playground as an extension of your classroom is a very, very powerful tool. Please think about that as a tool available at your disposal. 
lot of times sports and PE is not seen as a that core a part of overall educational uh, outcomes. Very often it's partly because of orientation, partly because of lack of comfort. There are tools available, people like us, and there are enough other tools available online. But it's working, the tool is working. We now also have digital curriculum, we have flexibility to focus on multiple stuff, we have curriculum available online. So we kind of done a lot of upgrades from the time we said COVID was tough for us, we survived uh, and still here and now rebuilding. We have assessment report card for each child, we're now adding uh, social emotional learning, we have data around impact on social emotional learning, we have data around impact on fitness, we have data, we have sports mapping where we look at the kind of fitness and skills they have and therefore what sports should they pursue, therefore school team building and so on. We report cards for each child, we uh, help school teams identification. Uh, yeah, we have built this whole pathways program for sp uh, creating schools teams. Because I think the, there, is a, there is a functional part of play which is to get all kids to play and there's an inspirational part of play which is that my team did well, therefore I will play. Both are required. The functional part helps me understand how to play and enjoy play, but the inspirational part of how my school is doing well, and therefore how can I also do well? My classmate is doing well, I can also do better. And that inspirational part creates, and we found it helping in solving a lot of the challenges we're talking about, including social media handling, including some of the stuff that people are seeing. We are finding that kids are able to handle situation better, they're able to find a safe space, a fun space, a positive engagement space, they have other ways of engaging with their peers and not just online. But the responsibility of doing that is on us, is on adults, is on school leaders, on parents. If not us, who? Because kids are not able to plan, kids are not able to find time, they cannot control their own time, they cannot control their own space. If not this room, who? The adults have to create and facilitate the context where kids get more chances to play. And the existing systems and structures are there. We also do talent identification, sports development. We now have gone into high performance learning as well. So essentially the whole, all kids playing, then the kids who are good, how can they do more? And as these kids do better, the more kids want to play. Therefore, the more of them stay away from the devices, more of them are able to engage better, form friendships, have conversations offline, not online. A lot of stuff that we spoke about, mental health, digital issues, Sports, play, PE as a tool is available, can really make a big impact, give it a try. Thank you. Should this, this should go ahead. Can you move ahead? No, that was not my slide. I got a lot of calls over the last few years about, okay, I know I have a sports program, what can I do, where is it today? Very often I am a principal or a school leader who doesn't have a sports context, maybe I'm a math teacher or subject teacher who's now or having to supervise sports, where am I today? What should I be checking? What should I be doing? And that's how we build the whole advisory model where we have a whole audit assessment piece, analysis and just an advisory saying here's where you are, here's what we've seen now over the last 15 years, 15,000 schools and this is what's working, what are your goals. So there's a whole advisory piece that we started to help schools just do a check as to where are you, what do you want to do and here's the path. Whether you work with us or somebody else, it's just a kind of a advisory piece that we started now, which is like a easier engagement model if you will. We also got into what we call arenas now, uh, where we're helping schools leverage their infrastructure after school and weekends. Again, our simple philosophy is to get 100 million kids to play, and we believe that the only way to do this is to work with schools. Therefore, how do we use better the space, time, attention, energy that all of you have, and partner to get more opportunities for kids to play, for parents to play, and in those opportunities is where all of the problems get solved. In those play opportunities where we create those contexts. So we're now helping with uh, running operations or setting them up, sports infrastructure, feasibility, ROI, and so on. Yep, this is some, some pictures, and this is the real stuff. All the issues, I'm not saying it's a magic pill, but a lot of the issues around the stuff that we've been speaking about in the morning, resilience, hard work, mental health issues, online challenges. We, let's find a way to get more of these pictures. Let's find a way to have kids doing this if we have positive, fun, engaging experiences for kids in the playground, I guarantee that they will, they're not gonna pick up that mobile phone or the game. The problem that's happening is the playground experience today is bad. It's not inclusive, it's not engaging, it's not fun. 
as adults we need to make this playground experience better so they stay uh, go don't go to those online contexts and other contexts and the tv contexts and that's on us so here's uh, hoping to have uh, more champions alive thank you again for your time have a good day All right, thank you so much, Mr. Somil. And before we move on, I would like to invite on stage a few dignitaries for the book distribution, which is Get Kids to Play. It's an influential book. And for that, I would like to request Ms. Malini Datta, BGS NPS Principal Director. Ms. Manila. GPS East Principal, Ms. Sanjana Verman, Principal of Basil Woods International School, Mr. Nari Chetty Bhaskar, Founder and Chairman of Candidus International School, Hyderabad, and Mrs. Saraswati Kalpak, Principal of Geetanjali International School, Kompalli, to please join us on stage. Let's have a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for all the dignitaries and Mr. Somil Majumdar, co-founder, CEO, and managing director of Sports Village. I would request Mr. Anil Sharma to please join us on stage to felicitate Mr. Somil Majumdar. Jumdar, co-founder, CEO, and managing director of Sports Village. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Anil. 